so in this lecture we are going to talk about quotient rings so for that what i will do is i will consider r to be a ring and let us take take an ideal of the ring so i will need i will be an ideal of the ring okay and i'm going to define the quotient r by i and what is this this is the collection of all cosets so cosets will be a of the form a plus i where a belongs to the ring r so these are the cosets of the ring uh, um, of uh, of the ring r because of the set of the ideal i okay and i'm going to collect all these cosets and what is the operation what are the two operations that i'm going to put on these cosets is that if i take two cosets suppose a plus i and if i add with b plus i which is again a coset the addition will be defined as what a plus b plus i it is the same as the thing we have done in our group theory course if i take second if if i take cosets a plus i and multiply it with b plus i then i'm going to define this multiplication as what i'm simply going to define this multiplication as a b plus i so i will take these two operations okay and i will look at which particular set i will look at the set r by i so with these two operations let me write these two operations a little bit bold okay so these are two different operations okay so this means that r by i with this new operation and with this new multiplication operation this forms a this forms a ring and this ring is called as what this ring is called as quotient ring or it is also called as factor ring so the last uh, important thing that one should discuss about ring homomorphisms and isomorphisms is the ring isomorphism theorem so let me just tell you what is the ring isomorphism theorem we had isomorphism theorem in uh, groups also so here again we will have a ring isomorphism theorem so i will again take phi to be a ring homomorphism from r to r dash so this is the first of all it is a ring homomorphism okay and phi is on to okay phi is a on to homomorphism this phi map is on to okay then uh, i'm not saying it one one okay i'm i'm not saying that the function phi is one one okay please take care so this means that if the function phi is not a one one function this means that the kernel of phi is certainly going to be non trivial kernel because because if um, if the function is um, one one then kernel would have become what singleton zero so i'm not necessarily forcing that the kernel should be what the kernel should be uh, equal to the singleton zero set okay and then what i will do is i will take the quotient okay the ring modulo phi kernel phi so r modulo kernel phi is this this quotient ring will now become what this quotient ring will now become isomorphic to the ring r dash so this is the uh, ring isomorphism theorem okay so for example we will take a ring r to be a set of integers and we will take a uh, one uh, one ideal and we know that ideals of uh, z are given by nz so in particular suppose i take the ideal to be 5z okay then i can talk so this is an ideal so i will now talk about the quotient uh, r by i which is nothing but here z by 5z okay and this ideal is actually isomorphic to which uh, ring this ideal is isomorphic to the ring z5 now how this how this isomorphism comes why this quotient ring so this is a quotient ring why this quotient ring is isomorphic to the set z5 this will be clear from the first ring, uh, from the ring homomorphism theorem if i take phi to be a map from z to z5 defined by what phi of n will be n modulo 5 in my homomorphism 
in, in the very introductory lectures of homomorphism we have proved that this forms a homo homomorphism and the kernel of this homomorphism will turn out to be 5z and therefore by the isomorphism theorem i can say that z quotient 5z will be isomorphic to z5 okay 